So welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm going to be doing my full review of the Topeak Midloader Frame Bag. If you're looking for a minimalistic, lightweight frame bag that you can easily access from both sides, this video is for you, so please stay tuned and subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the basic specs and features of the Midloader series, as well as installation, what I typically carry in it, price, and my final thoughts. So let's start off with the bag. This is the 4.5 liter version, but they do have a 3 liter and a 6 liter. I will have links in the description below for their website so you can easily take the overall dimensions and see which one fits inside your frame best for maximum carrying capacity. It easily attaches to your frame in five different locations. You have three hook and loop Velcro style straps at the top, and then two integrated nylon straps at the down tube and where it would attach to the seat tube. You have a full length water resistant zipper on both sides of the bag, and the bag is water resistant but not waterproof. As far as how much weight the bag can handle, they do rate it at 14.3 pounds, but it doesn't state if that's for all sizes or just the biggest size. So take that for what you will, but that's quite a bit of weight. And the bag is made out of a polyethylene nylon lightweight material, and it does conform pretty well. So it's gonna be able to wrap around different shape items pretty well in the bag. It's not super rigid like some others on the market. So let's get into installation of this bag. I know I already have it installed, so I'm gonna quickly take it off and show you my kind of process when doing it. And I do actually prefer putting the bag on with some items in it, either fully loaded or semi-loaded. That's just to give it some nice shape so you can actually position it a little bit better in the frame since this material is very pliable. So it's gonna conform differently when kind of all stretched out to where you almost need to loosen it when you fill it back up. So that's just my preferred way to do it. So now I have my bag and I'm gonna show you how I like to mount the bag. So typically what I like to do is simply mount the middle strap first. This way you can kind of balance the bag and I always do this one loose and tighten this one at the very, very end so you can make minor adjustments as you go, but this will kind of just suspend the bag here. Then you're simply just going to do the hook and loop tapes on the top. I always, again, like to leave these somewhat loose so you can slide the bag back and forth depending on how it fits best in your frame with your water bottles. So you can slightly move it around and adjust it as you see fit. Once you like the position, you're gonna to wanna to go through the straps again and re-tighten in case there is some play. But as you can see, that's pretty secure. Then you're gonna take your down tube strap, thread it through the buckle here, and tighten it down. Now they do leave this strap very, very long, so it'll work on different frames if you do have more space between this area of the bag and your down tube. So you're gonna cut this to length, but you're gonna notice I have a lot of excess, but they do actually have a little, basically, nylon rubber band on the other side to hold the strap against the frame so that you don't have a loose strap flapping around. If you were dedicating this bag to a certain frame, you then could cut this down to cut off the excess at the end there. Then you're gonna do the same exact process to the rear. And as you can see, this doesn't perfectly go all the way to the back of the bike. If I did go with the six liter, it might have, but then I would have no options for water bottles as far as mounting goes. So this is what I picked for my preferred method. But if it worked better for you, you could obviously tuck this all the way to the rear if you wanted a little bit more front end room, if you have a bigger frame and can fit a bigger bottle. So you wanna secure this and again, cut the excess off once you figure out how much you actually need and your mid loader is installed. So it's that easy and I basically did that in real time as you saw. So that's it for installation and how sturdy it is on the bike. You can see there's very little movement here and there's a lot of stuff in here that I'll be getting into next. So what I usually typically carry in my frame bags is predominantly food and possibly my cook system depending on what other bags I'm riding with. And I will be doing a review on the back loader from Topeak as well later on the line. So make sure to turn notifications on so you can see that when it does come out. So as far as the frame bags go, you always are gonna make a compromise with a mass produced bag like this. And the compromise is pretty much gonna be the general shaping that they're gonna use and to see what fits in your frame and what compromises you're gonna have. But typically the rule of thumb is you always want the heaviest items in the middle of your bike so that the handling feels the most natural. So typically your food and cook system, besides obviously your seat system, are gonna be usually the hardest or the heaviest items to carry. So this is my basically example of like maybe what I'd carry for an overnighter. Enough food and I'd probably have other accessory bags with me to carry some more additional snack items. But this is what I'm gonna kind of show you as far as what you can imagine for 4.5 liters. And as you saw when I was holding it, it does kind of deform the bag to fit everything in here. So you wanna make sure to plan smart on what you actually pack in this bag because it does tend to take shape of what's in there and it's not super rigid. So it's gonna possibly rub against your knees when you're pedaling if you don't pack it correctly. So you can see the full length zipper here and everything I have in here and it's quite a bit of things. So I have basically, I have a 90 second rice. I really like these kind of meals because I mix this with another meal I have in here. And these, because they're basically semi-cooked, cook a lot faster in, in my cook pot and use a lot less fuel. And I'll typically add a little bit of water, but it uses a lot less of my water and fuel canister when using these. They are a little bit heavier, obviously, than the hydrated meals, but for what I'm doing right now, these are a great option. 
I have two cookies, two packs of drink mix, an additional water bladder. Now this one I didn't fill all the way just because I wanted to kind of conform into the bag. And this bladder I got actually off of Amazon and it does actually work with my Sawyer filter. So this is a great option. And if I didn't want to carry that much water, I could obviously roll this up and not have it full. But I wanted to give an example of how much you could really carry. This is about one and a half liters and it's probably about two thirds full, give or take. Got an extra snack bar here. Another meal that I'll typically mix with rice if I'm doing a long, big day, and I'll either split these into two, and so that's just a little thing I like to do. And then you have my cook pot. I have a separate video of this. This is a titanium, really affordable cook pot and system and lightweight setup that I have. I'll put the links for that review in the description below, but I really like this thing and the form factor that it is. So as you can see here, this thing is now fully empty. And now let's get into price. Price for the mid-loader in the 4.5 liter size currently on Amazon is $59.95. So now let's get into my final thoughts. There are a few things that you always need to consider when buying a frame bag, especially with a mass market one like this. I would definitely recommend either doing a cardboard or a paper template to physically draw out from their dimensions they list on their website and they have a really great detailed way to do that so you can actually see everything put together. Now there are a few things to take into consideration when buying a frame bag no matter what size you're gonna go into. And it's mainly gonna be water bottle clearance. Frame bags like this are gonna allow you to typically still run water bottles. And I ride a 56 centimeter frame, so this setup on a smaller frame, obviously you'd wanna go with the smaller bag to give you more bottle clearance. Now that being said, typically when I go ride, I like to ride with two 21 ounce bottles. But as you can see here, I can't do that with this bag set up like this. I can run both bottles in this configuration and depending on what's in the front of my bag, this will work and I'll be able to take it in and out. But if I do put my cook pot in the front, I can't actually do it because the bag actually fully rocks every single time I do that. Keep that in mind, it is gonna be a compromise you're gonna have to do. Now they do have bottle spacers that can move your bottles down and Topeak actually has a set, but I do like running my Rocky Mountain Little Cheese bag. This is basically my emergency toolkit when I'm riding just in general. And when I'm running a saddlebag when I'm bikepacking, this is usually unused space. Now I could mount this bottle lower and put this in here or somewhere else on my bike packing system. But this is just a, an example if your bike does not have three bottle bosses to manipulate your water bottles up or down to fit better. So that's something you definitely want to consider when sizing your frame for these bags. Also, this does have a dual full length zipper, which I do like, but there is no divider in the bag. I wish they had something that was detachable, maybe something you could Velcro in so you could have a left and a right side if you wanted. That I think would make this a lot more functional without adding a lot of complexity to the bag. Having it fully open is really nice, but to have a slightly segmented section so you can put your phone or your wallet, or your keys, or something you want quick access to while riding or just when you're hopping off the bike so it's slightly or more organized, I think would be a nice added feature. But again, it just depends on what your needs are if this system works for you and you want just something that's completely open. As far as stability goes and everything else, the bag is very stable when riding. I didn't feel it moving or swaying underneath me when fully packed up, but as I'll demonstrate here, when it is fully loaded, there is a little bit of a gap that you can create in the bag between the bag and the frame, which means the bag's gonna be slightly lower than when you dimension it on there. So make sure to give yourself a little bit of leeway. I wish they had an extra two strap holes here to add extra security. I obviously wouldn't do one here because I do have my top mount bag, but I'd like to run an extra one in the rear to kind of suck it up a little bit more to give me more clearance for this back bottle so I could use it easier when pulling it out of the frame. So that's just one thing I wish they could ask add extra loops here just for convenience and especially depending on the different frame size and what you're running, adding a little bit of extra security and stability to suck the bag up would obviously be very beneficial in my opinion. But overall, I've been very happy with it. Again, it's a lightweight, pliable, kind of very cavernous bag. So if you're just trying to toss a bunch of stuff in here and load it up, this is gonna be the most volume that I've currently tested as far as a frame bag that doesn't take up the entire triangle or partially the triangle itself. So this is gonna be great for something if you wanna do a really long road ride, let's say, and bring all the food with you for the entire day so you don't have to make a lot of stops. This would be a great option because you can just stuff this thing completely with different items. So if you wanna pick up extra burritos or sandwiches while you're on the road, this will definitely take it up quite easily. And if obviously you're doing a long gravel ride and wanna bring more items with you, this is a great solution as long as you, again, pack it accordingly and make sure to protect any items if you are gonna put electronics in here because there isn't any real padding on this material to protect it or insulate it from being jostled around. 
So that's it. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments below. I check them every single day. And I really would appreciate it if you do like this video. It does help with the channel quite a bit since this is my full-time job. If you want to follow me on Facebook and Instagram so you can see what I'm currently testing out on this before it hits the channel, links for those are in the description below. As well as you can pick up a Slow But Look Pro t-shirt for my merch store, as well as support the channel on Patreon so I can produce more videos like this every single week. And lastly, thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in today by tutorial.